Yo, what's up, everyone? Abigor here today. I'm back with another banging video. So, this video, I want to talk about the current state of the WWE Women's Division. And I just want to talk about how bad it's been actually throughout these past couple of years because the booking for the Women's Division has literally made no sense and it's literally all over the place. Especially the taxing division, but we'll get to the taxing division in a little bit. But yeah, man, it's mainly have to do with Triple H. Because people just credit Triple H as such a great booker, right? Even though most of the storylines that he's been booking is started under Vince McMahon. But, you know, that's for another time. But listen, um, yeah, the women's division, like the women's storylines that's been taking place on TV. It's really not they've been that good, man. And it's to a point where some of these stars don't really feel like stars. You know what I'm saying? And the easy example is Bianca Belair. You know, Vince turned Bianca to a superstar. You know, when Vince was doing creative, you know, because she won the Running Rebel. Uh, she made an event at WrestleMania. You know, won the SmackDown Women's title. I think she held the title for well over a year. Um, And now, she's just flown around the tag division with Jay Cargill. Well, I feel like part of the reason is because people were complaining about her uh, being pushed heavily. So that's probably why. And then those same people who still complain to myself, oh, why is she, why is this should be a push? It's because of y'all, bro. Because y'all complain every single time y'all not consistent. But look, look, um, then these storylines, bro, these storylines, like it's just kind of been repetitive and it's been boring. Know what I'm saying? Like, you know, for an easy example, you know, this Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan stuff that's going on right now. I mean, like, I get it, like, you know, Liv Morgan still want to take a revenge and stuff, but, like, you already have your get back, you know. And Rhea is still trying to persuade us, as you know, like, you know, I'm trying to get my get back, too. Many people don't understand, you know, Rhea is really the main villain here. Because, you know, there was an attack team, and then Rhea turned on Liv, and, you know, she joined the Judgment Day and everything. And then that caused her getting injured, you know, and then all the other stuff. And now we have this going on, including Dominic Mysterio. All right. So these dragged on storylines, you know, if it's not interesting enough, then why, what's the point of you dragging it? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the women's division, I mean, like, it's strong enough. But at the same time, it's not really working if the book is not that good. Because this booking makes no sense. And then we have the tattoo division. Like, the tattoo division has been some of the worst I've seen. Literally some of the worst I've seen. You know, for example, uh, the Pure Fusion Collective. What type of name is it? Is that? Pure Fusion Collective? You know, that's some AI stuff right there, bro. And it's a full bunch of jobbers. You know, Zoe Stark, Sonya Deville. Well, I actually think it's pretty decent. And we have Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler has to be one of the quickest downfalls ever, bro. Like, she went from being a beast on NXT. You know, she became a two-time NXT Women's Champion. And she held a championship for well over a year. And then she went on the main roster. You know, she had a cool start. You know, she won the Elimination Chamber. And she was about to uh, face Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's title at, uh, at WrestleMania that year. And then she won by a week roll-up. Well, my bad. Becky won by a week roll-up. And that kind of forced Shayna to be in a tag team division. First, she was with uh, Nia Jax. That didn't really do anything. And, you know, she became with other people. And she became with, like, Natalia and all these other people. Like, bro. Like, like, what are we doing here, bro? What are we doing? This is why the tag team division is a joke right now. Because you have women that's not actual tag teams being bunched up in the tag team. Because, look, I get it, you know. Y'all want to, like, you know, spread people out and you know, spread the division more, everything like that. But at the same time, it's not working. It's not working because the the fans are not taking these people serious as tag teams. Know what I'm saying? So, you know, just try to elevate it out. And maybe, maybe you'll get something going and actually have a storyline with these teams. But no. I chose to do this goofy stuff, so not too many people care about the, the tag team division. And I'm one of the people that say WWE should never introduce a tag team division for the women. 
because even before the tag team division came along, there wasn't any tag teams to begin with. You know, the only real tag team you can really think of is the Iconics. You know, what they was there before they got released. And, and you could maybe say the Riot Squad. But other than that, what actual tag teams are you had? You know, Sasha and Bailey, they didn't start off as a tag team. They started off as solo wrestlers. And, you know, they just kind of shifted over back and forth. Now do all this goofy stuff. You would think that Carmella and Zelina Vega was in the tag team? Yeah, I appreciate sure y'all don't remember that, do you? Like, and that's the thing, too, because a lot of these things that they're doing is so forgettable. It's literally so forgettable, and more, many people do not care. They do not care about this stuff because the booking is not great, and the storylines is not interesting enough for people to get interested in. So, obviously, there's a major problem here. And, look, I get that, you know, creative could be hard at times. You know, you can't focus on everything all at once. But at least try to approve this. You know what I'm saying? Because, and this could be the same thing for the men's division, too. You know, storyline-wise. But, you know, main problem is the women's division. Because these people don't feel like stars. And the storylines... Or not that interesting. So, you know, you can maybe approve that a little bit. And low, try to, like, have more focus to that. Then maybe you could have some positive feedback. But until Triple H does that, there's not going to be any positive feedback. So, you just add that on. And, you know, you just get along with your day. And there is that. And that's another thing, too. I just feel like sometimes, you know, Triple H, they just put the titles on the wrong people at the wrong times, too. You know, for example, EO Sky. Look, I believe EO Sky is a very overrated wrestler, in my opinion. Look, y'all could disagree with me all y'all want, but i never been intrigued by EO Sky. I've never been intrigued by her matches. Look, I guess she, she's a great wrestler and all, but what else can she really do? I guess she's Japanese, but what else can she really do? You know, she's in a jobber fashion, and she doesn't really have a character. So, what, what more can I really be interested in? But, you know, when she, came, when she became the women's champion... You know, everybody was all this side all this other stuff. You know, I get it. Because people love EO Sky so much. But that title reign had to be one of the most forgettable and boring title reigns I've ever had to watch, bro. Like, literally. Like, I don't remember one title defense that she had. And I don't remember, like, even one memorable thing that she done with that title reign. Not, like, even Bailey beating her at WrestleMania didn't even save it because... You know, Bailey's title reign was boring too. And the Nia Jax stuff right now is not getting any better. Look, I get that, you know, they're setting up the storyline for um for Tiffany Stratton, you know, to become the women's champion and everything. Hopefully she can improve on that too, because Tiffany's NXT women's title reign was kind of disappointing. So hopefully they could fix up on that. But other than that, man, like what are we doing with the women's title? What are we doing with this, bro? What are we doing? Like, this is this is ridiculous. And same thing for the um the women's world title with Lil Morgan. You know, she only had like what two defenses and she had the title since like what May? Like, come on, dog. Like, what are we doing, bro? And then it's between the same people too. Look, you no, know, she had her little cage match with Becky Lynch. Uh I believe she defended against Selena Vega too. On like a random episode of Raw. And now. She with this real Ripley stuff. Now that she's back. Like listen. It's just all over the place. And it's just ridiculous bro. Like y'all really need to approve on this. They need to fix this thing up. Because. You know. They wanna, y'all want to credit wrestling for more than just sex appeal right? But unfortunately. You no. Know, well can't really say unfortunately. But fortunately. You no know, sex appeal. Draws in wrestling. Really for the casual fans. You know. But. They want to credit them as more than sex appeal. They want to credit them for. You know just wrestling and pure mic skills. And you know just having a good character right. Maybe you could add that on too. But I don't really know at this point. But yeah man that's all I got to say about this though. You know. Triple H and you fix the women's division. is all over the place. And it's just ridiculous. And you know. Just fix up on that. 
but yeah man comment down below what y'all think about this uh this topic you know for the women's division and uh i'll see you boys in the next video peace